Hey everyone, this is Kenji. I'm about to make some uh, chili verde, and so I thought I'd record it. Um, I'm not gonna do this from the beginning because um, I roasted these peppers a while back um, on my grill, on the sort of the dying embers of my grill. Uh, so I just had them. These are hatch chilies. That all I've done with them so far is I roasted them until they were blistered and charred. And I'll, and I'll point to a video or some or an article where I show you how to do this. But basically, just put them over directly over the fire on a grill, um, or you can do them on the broiler, or you can do them on the flame um, of the flame of a gas burner indoors um, but you roast them till they're blistered all over and then i just put them in a um a covered container and let them cool down um and so now they become easy to peel um so chili verde um this is made with pork this is a classic dish um in well in mexico and new mexico um i'm making a sort of hybrid version what i got here is pork shoulder cubed up i'm gonna salt it okay and i'm gonna toss it and i'm gonna let that sort of sit on the side for a little bit, about 15 minutes or so. Um, actually, I probably won't let it sit a full 15 minutes because I don't really feel like waiting that long. So I'll just let it sit while I prep the remaining ingredients. Um, what that does is the salt kind of works its way into the meat um, and it helps it stay a little bit juicier as it cooks. Um, if you've ever had something like duck, duck confit, um, there's two steps to that process. One is salting the meat and the second is slowly cooking it in its own fat. Um, and salting it is not just about um, making it saltier. Salt actually breaks down muscle proteins so that when they subsequently cook, they don't tighten up as much and so less juice gets squeezed out. Uh, so salted meat tends to be juicier than unsalted meat. Um, all right, so I've also got <clears throat> some tomatillos here, which I'm going to peel. Tomatillos are, are not related to uh, tomatoes. They're actually related to gooseberries or um, husk cherries, which as gooseberries are also called. Um, or if you've ever had uh, Chinese lanterns, those my mom used to have Chinese lanterns, which are a sort of decorative. Um, they're not really a flower. They're they're a decorative plant. Um, they have these bright orange husks that look like these, but smaller, um, and that's because they're also related. Uh, but tomatillos, uh, they look like tomatoes. Oops, that guy's going to need a little trim. Uh, but they have a much sort of tartar flavor. So even when they're fully ripe, they're, they're nice and tart. Um, with gooseberries, you use that to your advantage. So they're very high in, high in pectin and very high in acid, which means that when you make them into a jelly, uh, they, they set very firmly, gooseberries, which is why um, there are some these classic dishes like gooseberry fools, which are um, rely on the fact that gooseberries are high in pectin and are very tart to thicken up. Interesting fact, right? I don't know. I think it's interesting. All right, so I'm gonna, this is about, I don't know, a couple pounds of tomatillos. I'm gonna split them in half, put them on this baking sheet. Um, if you can't get your hands on hatch chilies, by the way, um, I have a recipe, I'll link to it in the description. Um, I have a recipe on Siri Seats that uses uh, a combination of cubanelles and poblanos. Um, you, could all, you can use really, honestly, any kind of green pepper that you like. Um, some are gonna vary in heat, some are gonna vary in flavor, but whatever you use is gonna be delicious. It'll just be a little bit different. Um, I've got a jalapeno there that I took the seeds and most of the ribs out of. I'm gonna throw it on that tray as well. Uh, and then what am I gonna do? And then I got some garlic cloves. Here's like, I don't know, five, six cloves of garlic. All right, I'm gonna salt all this. I'm gonna oil it. And you know, these guys kind of face down so that the skins cook. And then I'm just going to throw this under a preheated broiler, which I have going. A broiler set to high. So these are going to go in here. And I'm going to broil them until they're completely soft and kind of starting to char a bit. So I don't know. That'll be about, about 15 minutes or so. Maybe, I guess, about the same amount of time that the pork has to rest. Um, so once you've, um, once you've managed to roast and uh, rest the chilies under cover, um, the skins become very easy to peel off. Um, the one thing you don't want to do with chilies, even though it's tempting to do it, because it seems like it seems like it'll be very easy to just take these and run them what under water and uh, take the skins off. Um, you don't want to do that because you end up. Um, washing away flavor and I, I did when I was developing a recipe for this I did a blind taste test um, and people could very easily tell when the chilies had been um, run underwater versus just peeled 
straight up like this. Um, the one thing you can do, which I'm not doing today I, for, I don't know, whatever reason, is that you can, if you find it easier, you can take, um, you know, for a dish like this where I'm going to be adding liquid to it later anyway in the form of chicken stock, or in this case water with chicken bouillon, what you can do is you can get a bowl, put your chicken stock in that bowl. Oops, hang on a moment. All right, sorry about that. So I think what I was saying was that what you can do is you can um, fill up your bowl with the chicken stock you're going to use in here, um, and then... That way you can submerge these in the chicken stock and use that chicken stock to help you wash off the skins. Um, and you don't end up diluting the flavor that way because all the flavor that's getting washed off to that chicken stock is going to make it right back into the dish anyway. Um, so it's sort of like you're making a, um, a roasted pepper tea in a sense. Um, but, you know, today I'm, th these skins are coming off so easily that I'm not even going to bother using that method. Generally, the, lo the longer you let this, the peppers rest after roasting, um, especially resting them under cover so that they can steam a little bit, um, the, the easier the skins become to take off. Um, I'm also taking out most, but not all the seeds. Mainly, it's, it's mainly just be for texture. Um, but if you don't mind those seeds in there, you can feel free not to bother taking them out. Like I'm, you can see, I'm not being meticulous about this at all. And I think I actually, someone's gonna point it out, but I accidentally just, emptied out some of the seeds directly into the bowl, but that's fine. All right, so that's done there. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start browning off that pork. Okay, so we got our Dutch oven here. Let me get it over, let me get it over the hot burner. <clears throat> Where's my grapeseed oil? Grapeseed oil. We want this to get kind of pretty much smoking hot. Let's check on those tomatoes. All right, yep, we're starting to brown a little. Oh, sorry, tomatillos, not tomatoes. Looking good. Um, in the meantime, I'm also gonna, I don't have any chicken stock on me, but I do have this stuff. Better than bouillon. Um, it is indeed better than bouillon, and I'm going to use it. So we want about a quart of this, which is four cups. I think this calls for one teaspoon per per cup. So we want about a, tea, a tablespoon plus a teaspoon of this stuff. So, uh, well, I guess that's a quarter cup of this stuff. Sorry, not a quarter cup. That'd be four too. A quarter of a quarter cup, a sixteenth of a cup. That looks close enough to me, though. All right. Also doesn't hurt if you go overboard on that. More chicken flavor doesn't hurt. All right, we want about a quart there. I'm gonna stir this all together. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab <clears throat> my immersion blender and a container. I'm gonna get a deeper container than this, let's see. There you go, quart container. You can do this in the food processor or the immersion blender, you could also do it by hand. Um, and anything that's gonna sort of allow you to roughly, roughly or finely puree uh, the chilies and the tomatillos will work. These are looking good. I'm gonna wanna make sure we grab all those juices. All right, so you can see the tomatoes get, tomatillos get nice and soft. And that charring is gonna add some flavor as well. Um, on this dish, by the way, if you don't have like really hot chilies and you want your dish spicier, you can adjust that heat by adding more or fewer jalapeno, jalapenos, um, or you can use other chilies like serrano. Um, anything that's hot, you can obviously use. Um, if you don't want it hot at all, you can use you know very mild chilies or even bell peppers. You can use very mild chilies with no jalapenos, and it'll still it'll still taste good. Because um, I know some people don't like hot stuff. All right, so that oil is now smoking hot. Get the pork in there. 
get it in basically a single layer. So this is pork shoulder, a um, couple pounds of it, maybe three pounds of it. You want pork that's nice and sort of fatty and has plenty of connective tissue because that's what's going to give body and juiciness to the stew. And now we're just going to let it sear there without really moving it. Um, for a few minutes until it's nicely browned. All right, I got this pureed. Um, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna add some cilantro to there. By the way, if you, if you don't, um, if you don't wanna make chili verde, um, but you like those flavors of roasted chilies and uh, tomatillos, um, what I'm making right now makes an excellent, excellent, excellent um, salsa verde. You know, just something to throw in your tacos or put in with your chips. I'm going to throw a handful of cilantro in there also. All right. So you can just take this, season it with salt. Add some, uh, maybe a little lime juice, um, and it would be delicious. Okay, so now I'm just gonna let this basically sit here until it browns on one side, so I'll be back in about five minutes. All right, so, there we go. Looking nice and brown on one side. I'm gonna give this a little stir. Let it start browning on that second side, or whatever other side there is. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to take a white onion. You know what, I think in my other recipe I have this onion, I have you roast this onion along with the um, tomatillos, um, but that's okay. We're just going to saute it with the meat. Alright, so I'm going to finally dice it. This one, I'm gonna sliver some of it to, sit, to use as a garnish later on. Let me get that in a little bowl with a little bowl with some water. And that'll help keep it kind of crisp and also um, dilute some of the sort of more sulfurous flavors. So it'll be a little bit sweeter when we want it later. And then the rest I will also dice. we're gonna need is cumin seed. So about a tablespoon or so of that. Grind it up in the mortar and pestle. So when you're grinding in a mortar and pestle like this, you kind of go in a circular motion as opposed to pounding. Pounding is what you would do for vegetables, kind of crushing, whereas with, a, with um, dried spices like this, you grind around in a circle. I find mortar and pestle to be much easier to use, especially for small amounts of spices than a spice grinder because spice grinder, first of all, grinding small amounts of spice grinder, spices in a spice grinder is impossible because they kind of just fly around the blade so they don't actually grind. Um, and more importantly, a spice grinder is just kind of a pain in the butt to uh, clean, an electric spice grinder that is. Okay. Let's get our, let's get our onion in there. cumin. And 
we're just going to stir this until the onion is just slightly softened. So you know, even just about a minute is fine. We don't want any browning on that onion. Just want to kind of sweat it out a little. Even that is probably enough. Just get that raw edge off of it. All right, now in goes our chili puree. And our chicken stock. Or in this case, our better than bouillon. Now we're basically already at a simmer, which is good. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now, I'm on a, this oven that had the uh, broiler preheated. I'm gonna set it to, uh, set it to 275 degrees. Okay. I'm gonna get this lid, put it on your just slightly ajar. And then it goes in the oven. Um, <clears throat> you can do this on the stovetop, but you get better flavor out of an oven um, because of the heating from all around um, helps the top of it brown a little bit. So you get a little bit of those Maillard reaction flavors um, that you wouldn't get just from a bottom heat source on the stovetop. Um, so you get better flavor. Uh, the reason you leave the lid a little bit of jar is because if you leave a heavy lid on like this, it actually raises the temperature, the boiling temperature of it. So it will boil more you know, it's gonna simmer at around, um, you know, 200 degrees or so if you put the lid on it. Whereas if you leave the lid ajar, um, the evaporative cooling uh, brings it into equilibrium at around 185 to 190 degrees, um, which is a better temperature to cook your pork because it doesn't dry out as much. So now um, I'm gonna close this. We're gonna cook it for about three hours. Um, and through the magic of turning off my camera for three hours and turning it back on again, this is pretty much ready, I think. <sighs> All right, so the last step here is that we're going to skim off some of that excess fat, you know, because that pork shoulder has a ton of fat in it. Um, and some fat is good, but you don't want it to be, you don't want your chili to be greasy. So we're just gonna use a uh, ladle and just skim off some of that fat on the top. You don't have to skim off all of it. Um, when, you, when you start stirring this, it'll kind of emulsify back in. Um, and then we also are going to reduce this liquid down so that the chili, well, it can be as thin or as thick as you want it. By the way, this is not, you know, like if you, if you go, if you get like a real um, traditional or modern New Mexican style green chili, um, it's often thickened with a flour based roux. Um, and usually the pork is shredded up a little more finely. It's more of, sort of more of a sauce than a chunky stew the way this one is. Um, but I prefer it chunky like this, so I do it that way. You can do it however you like. Okay, I think that's enough fat to take out. Yeah, that's looking good. Um, I'm actually not going to reduce this too much because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this meat out and tonight I think we'll eat it as tacos. Um, and then with the leftovers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a couple of cans of uh, white beans and let them simmer in there. And then we'll eat them again. We'll eat this again probably a few days from now as a more of a stew that we eat with a spoon. You know, for now, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have all this taco stuff ready. So I'm just going to make it just so I can show you, so I can show you what it looks like. So let's take some of those chunks of pork shoulder. Um, by the way, it is very much possible to overcook um, braised meats like this. So you want to cook it just until the meat is tender and sort of shreddable, but not beyond that because it will start to dry out even in a moist environment like this. I'll let that simmer down a little bit actually. All right, so I got these tortillas that I toasted. Gonna double them up because this is a very wet filling. Oh yeah. 
Ooh. I'm gonna do this with two forks because it's too hot to poke with my fingers. Yeah, so you can see that's about perfectly done when the pork is still kind of holds its shape when it sits there, but very easily shreds when you uh, pull on it a little bit. And we'll spoon some of that sauce over it. You can, of course, also use this to stuff burritos, enchiladas, eat it on its own. You can serve it in bowls just with some tortillas on the side. It's really delicious. All right, cilantro. A little bit of onion. You don't really need much. Um, so you, you, you can add lime juice to this if you want, but tomatillos are so acidic that you don't always need uh, lime juice. It'll still be plenty bright on its own. This is just some cotija cheese. Right. Oh man, doesn't that look good? Oh, I think it looks great. Beautiful. Yeah, smells good. All right, I'm gonna try a bite of this uh, taco here. Mm. Mm. So good. Oh, <laughs> drop that one. Go for a shovel. And here you go, home. Good boy. All right. Pork chili verde. And I will see you later, guys, gals, and non-binary pals.